Um, I'm going to call this board adjustments meeting to order um, on Thursday, September 7th, 2023, low about 26. Um, roll call. Uh, Tyler Bradbury. Here. Taylor Daly. Here. Melissa Hartman here. William Bill Higgins. Here. Fred Miller. Um, Patterson excused, correct? Yes, and Mr. Miller's excused too. Got it. Got it. Ken Budge, Council Liaison. Here. Um, Joe Ward, Building Inspector. Here. And um, are you staff liaison, Javier? I, I think so. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Got it. So it uh, looks as though we just had one item on the agenda. And it, item one is the Board of Adjustments 23-02 Historic District Non-Contributing Property Number 634. Uh, we do have the applicant here, correct? Yes. So nice drum from the MG contracting. Um the you're requesting a variance for a lot split, dividing an existing 7,000 square foot lot under the minimum area established by a city and zoning code. So with that, I will open the public hearing. It's a the hammer, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, your presentation by the applicant. That. Yeah, it should be one of the last pages. This one? Okay. Well, thank you. Oh, okay. And I'll take one. This one's okay. Thank you. I see that. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Sure. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks for coming. Thank you for coming. I am the Russian between the soccer and the former property of the city of the city of Mr. Phil Beck, who is the owner of the public property. If you could maybe uh, put the mic closer to you. Yeah, there you go. Sorry. Is it on? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, the request is for uh, a lot split to allow lesser square footage to um, two parcels. The current one is at 7,000 square feet, roughly in half. Uh, this is the site of the old uh, the machine on Arizona Street. We purchased the property approximately a little over a year ago, and it was a get work to open, reopen his business from uh, Phoenix down here via the electronic business. Uh, we did no real plan for the remains of the property behind, which he more recently chose to want to go ahead and build a house for himself and move from Phoenix down here to visit. So um, that basically is the, the, what the request is all about, is to separate the uses between the commercial and the residential so that if he were to choose to sell the building off and remain in the house, that if they're coupled together on the same parcel, it's not likely that a person looking for a house wants to buy a commercial building and vice versa. So uh, there's uh, another reason involved also regarding the Arizona Water Company. Uh, for some unexplainable reason, they don't like doing two water services on a given single property. And I don't know why, but uh, the second meter, if we chose to do it as all one parcel, would be at a penalizing rate because it follows a temporary service. So that would be punishment for my client as to just having a second water meter. So um, what I just handed out here was all of the non conforming properties that are highlighted in yellow that are directly across the street next door 
what have you, and partially up with the block. And I'm sure there's just as many if we kept expanding that map. So um, I think that pretty well covers the reason behind what we're trying to achieve. Um, did you have any questions? Well, we're going to go on to um, if there's a comment for persons uh, speaking in favor of it. There is not. Um, comments for, by persons opposed. We have three minutes. Nope. None of those. And then we're going to move on to a summarization by city staff. And then we first can hear the other. Thank you, sir. You can sit down. Okay. Hey, um, the, the reason that we have 6,076,000 per day at the criteria is really, it's hard to find any code, but it is really at the minimum if you look at the um, setbacks and uh, look at it in the, in the zoning code. So that's, that's why the 6,000 square foot is there. Whereas when, when I look at them with the historic district, it specifically says 4,000 is, is the limit, and that's easier for me to understand, but it took me a little while to figure out. How that word is, but anyway, the um, I I don't care what here or there with the um, the split on the property. It's it's not that important to me. You guys can make your mind up, and and I'm going to be happy with whatever you decide. So the only question that remains, I think, in it is does it have self imposed? Yeah, um, problem is self imposed by dividing the lot and making it smaller. Okay, that would be exactly the question in my mind. Okay. Um, um, Joe, do you have any comments as a city representative? Well, from from a legal perspective, I just want to go over the the requirements for a variance, which require that the board find that special circumstances apply to this specific property whether there's non-conforming uses in the neighborhood or surrounding properties is not a, a basis for a determination. And in fact, the, the stated goal is, is that we don't create additional non-conforming uses that we try to bring everything into conformance when possible. Um, the specific findings the special circumstances applicable to the property include size, shape, topography, location, other surroundings, uh, strict application of the zoning code, depriving the property of privileges enjoyed by other properties of the same classification and the same zoning district. Um, and as you know, that the that the special circumstances, if found, cannot be self-imposed by the property owner they have to be existing just inherently based off of the property not off of the uh the property owner's desired use or you know current construction plans and stuff i guess one question i would have is if this was a concern why the property owner didn't seek to split the property prior to starting construction on the residential structure um and instead of going about this kind of a, the backwards way of starting a residential structure and then seeking a, a variance and asserting that the variance is necessary now because there's a a residential structure that's being constructed on the property okay Jim. Um, you have a rebuttal before we ask questions. Yeah, if, if the applicant has any additional information with regard to the special circumstances that are being alleged and how those are applicable to this property and how they're not self imposed, uh, that would be very helpful for the board. Mm -hmm. That's what we're asking. I'm not sure how to answer with the part regarding self-imposed. Um, he lives out of town and is intending to move here and make this his house for the remainder of his life and retirement. Uh, 
it didn't start out as that plan when he purchased the property. He was looking for a commercial site to land his business from Phoenix. So this has been a progression of things that he had to make decisions about as to where he would eventually live and how he would run his business. He's semi-retired and he's selling off what I believe to be everything that he currently owns in the Phoenix area and moving down here for the rest of his life. So I, I can't get inside of his head as to how he arrived at, at any of these conclusions because it was just to make a piece of dirt when he bought Precision Machine and he was happy to have that building at the time. So uh, again, getting back to that self-imposed issue, uh, I don't have a, a real clear answer other than that's where he wants to live, but he wants to be able to pass on that building to his only heir, his father. And at some point in time, it would be very difficult if she was trying to use that building or market it or sell it and a house has to go along with it. Vice versa, if he had to move away to go to any kind of facility to live in and have to sell the house, he'd be at the burden of trying to sell the house with a commercial building attached to it. Was there was there any discussion when he came to you for the construction as to why he didn't seek to divide the property first before starting construction on the house? I, I don't know if I could read his mind as to why. It, the first time I ever met him, he, he looked at the uh, concept of me building him a one bedroom apartment inside of a building. He wasn't sure what the destiny of that land was or how it would even get used, if ever. All right, does the board have any additional questions? Well, not yet. We're going to um, close the public hearing and then we're going to go on to discussion. Right, Hannah? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, um, at this point, we will close the public hearing. So, and we will go into um, discussion of the variance application among the board members. So, this is closed. So, questions, comments? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, my, my my initial question was what the self service is. I think we've got that answer. Um, and I think, unfortunately, that the water company increased cost for the water company providing two services to the property, I don't think would um, probably qualify under uh, not self-imposed because um, it's because of the building, that's the residential building that's being put on there. I'm assuming that would probably be correctly thinking about that. Um, my, uh, my other understanding is that um, on, a res on a commercial property that it was allowed to have a residential building built on that so that was there's nothing that's been done you know um, illegally um, at, at this point that you can build a residential building on a commercial property so whether you know the fact that that there, that building is going up right now really in a way is sort of no, you know, not here nor there on, on our decision um, so it seems to me as though what Mr. Prestes was saying is that it's it's a matter of even though there's been precedence for having lots in that area be less than the required six thousand square feet is whether we can continue to allow this to happen. It seems to me that that's the question in front of us. Any other comments from the board? Chair? Yes, sir. One thing I know it's this whole thing about well, can I sell it down the road or whatever? But I always think of rent. And so if somebody would buy a commercial property, they could always rent the other place as an income property. So I wouldn't be so worried about well, it's, I'd have to sell the whole thing. Somebody would sell it and also buy the house as a rental, but that would help supplement the business. So there's two ways to maybe get around it down the road. If you, if they had to, and be 
um, sell it with a commercial property and a rental unit. That's a, that's part of the whole deal. So I don't believe that it would be a cumbersome, but they would have to only sell the house separately from, from the commercial. That's, that's just a, another idea. Mm -hmm. I thought uh, that he said that uh, the idea was uh, uh, by separating them, um, he could uh, sell the commercial part of it or have somebody else run it and still stay in the business and live in that apartment. Is that what you said? Not really. I, I mean, he, he will continue to own it, but at some point in time, that building may have some other purpose altogether. He's just about ready to retire out of the business he's in. So I don't know what the, the destiny of that building is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Joe, can I ask a question, please? So the 7,000 square feet lots, well, it goes to 30, obviously, it goes to 3,500 each on the two. And I do have a copy of the building code, but can, and can you interpret to me, we don't usually do 3,500 square feet lots, do we? No. Well, one lot would be 3,250, and the other lot would be 3,750. So it's not quite an, an even split, sorry. Yeah. I just wanted to point that out. I believe the bigger parcel is where the the thirty seven fifty is where the um, commercial commercial building is. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, and you can talk to me a little bit about the code and the I think I want to know about zoning code. Well, no, I think I want to know about building code. So, typically, do we allow 3,200 3, square feet to build a home? It's currently not permitted in part. And the building code don't show me all of that. But that's the one part of the business. Okay. And same same question for the business building. Has anybody been permitted at that little square thing? Not that I can think of, but I, I know that there was there were um some specifics on a real small piece of dirt in old business that was on when we sold it. So we wanted to go something. Okay. So if we look at this variance, we're violating the building code. The zoning code. Well, zoning code. I mean, zoning code, I apologize. Well, the zoning code. <laughs> I know. Without, without a variance, it would violate it. Right, correct. Yeah. Okay. It's, not, it's not permitted. <laughs> but to continue on with what Melissa is saying, if we look at this, document that Mr. I'm sorry, Nystrom provided to us, that it looks to me as though there are other properties in that area that are less than the 30, than the 6,000 square feet, okay? Um, and then it probably the one that's a couple lots over on Arizona Street, that probably is a commercial, the one that's in three sections there, that's probably is. So we already have examples of less than 6,000 square feet um, residential as well as commercial in this area. Yeah. Um, so that, I think that's what makes this kind of a tricky decision. Tricky decision to make. That was before the COVID. Okay. Okay. Um, I heard that the attorney was saying that we can't let that set precedence on this. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that once a code goes in, everything that's from that point back is all grandfathered in. Okay. We can't. Yeah. You know, right. So that was the question: Is that when did all this happen? And this was this was historic. It wasn't recent. It wasn't recent. Unless there was a special variance that you guys gave. Uh huh. Um. Uh, oh yeah. My other question was that. Um, I see that on this plot plan document here that you have nine feet and five feet on the S, the yeah, setbacks. setbacks. 
So that would still be satisfied. The correct setbacks would be satisfied when um, on the, the, the uh, footprint of the building. Then. So that's not a problem. The setbacks are all that's going to be satisfied. The setbacks in, the, in a developed area like, like it is are, are determined by the neighborhood standards. Okay. And that means all the neighborhood standards. Okay. Or sometimes the well, right one. The, the city just adopted new minimum lot coverage amounts that would be applicable that you would have to take into consideration. Which are? They're in your packet. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, if I can just, they're attached to Article it's, 5. It's how, much, how much coverage is allowed versus land? And, and that deals with sort of runoff off of roofs and so on. So it's unpermeable. So in other words, Water cannot get the ground, hit something else, and then runs off. So it's we just set those codes. But I'll ask Joe. I don't know when this was put in. I don't think we had the pass already. Was it? Was since this was applied for before that we passed that? It probably wouldn't apply on this one, but it would on future. My, my thinking there. Well, even even if an application submitted, it's not processed and it's not finalized until decisions rendered. So if if that standard is applicable and, and is now active, then it, it needs to be looked at. Okay. Uh, but even I think I think there's a couple ways you can look at what even not even bringing into the consideration that minimum lot coverage requirement, you get down to the the question still here is is that the minimum lot size for a residential lot is 6,000 square feet. And he's asking for a variance to reduce that by at least half, over half on one and just above half on the other. And again, you, you don't you don't even have to consider the fact that there's a, a residential structure under construction that that's you know pretty much a, a non-issue because it was it's permitted and it's it's allowed under its current uh, zoning use. So the question being is, is, does the variance, which is seeking a reduction in lot size, meet the special circumstances that are provided for in, in city code and it's, which is copied straight from state statute. This isn't just a city of Bisbee uh, requirement for a variance. This is a state law, statewide requirement for a variance that one, you have to find special circumstances and determine and make a finding as to what those special circumstances are. And then two, you have to make a finding that those special circumstances are not self-imposed. Any questions? Well, I think that leaving all in one part of the way he was saying is not the biggest of a deal, even if it comes time for, for sale or whichever it may be, if you're looking for a residential place and you end up with a commercial and residential place and you rent out a commercial. And vice versa, if you are looking for a commercial place and end up with residential and you rent out the, the residential and it just turns into an all around, you know, way of putting extra profit and way to cover other expenses that might come along with it. Um, you know, and that's that's there's other places in town that are the same way. Um, that they are residential and commercial, and sometimes there can be, you know, not necessarily a, an issue, but more of a personal opinion issue that there that creates a problem. You know, um, but I don't I don't see any reason that there would be a problem with this this space. You know, and the other thing with these you know, that commercial building and the commercial building next to it are joint buildings. So to me, what would make sense is trying to acquire the property next door to it and splitting that property in the other direction. You know, you can, if they can acquire the other property, combine all the parcels and then split it the other direction, then everything would still be within within zoning mm -hmm. and the square footage use. Um, that's my. Anyone else have any comments? I I um 
I think Mr. Rice's uh, uh, comments are very persuasive, and the fact that we cannot take into consideration precedents, um, um, I think, is uh, unfortunately not in the um, developer's favor. Um, and there, and that, that there are these are self-imposed. Um, uh, What's what we're wondering about is the well the, the special the special circumstances are self imposed and there's nothing external um, that's um, causing this request. So um, you know, unfortunately, I don't think that um, that there's a lot of reason to grant the appointments. And any more comments before I call for a vote? No. First, Doug, is the water company the only utility that stated you guys issues? Water company stated the a second meter would be considered temporary only and they charge a much higher rate than just what you're calling in the construction water. And you got hey, so would it be an issue to use? The, the single water meter for both structures. I know that there's already been a water line ran, but that yeah. water line has been it, it wouldn't be any issue. Because that could be and used and for if, future use. And if you folks don't, you know, see it our way, then in essence, nothing physically changes. There'll be right. a house, there'll be a building, there'll be a water service, there just won't be a property line. Right. So at the end of the day, all we do is Work off the existing water service, and everybody goes home. Yeah. But and you could put a sub meter in as well for the residential too. You could have a meter off. Uh, I mean, your own your own internal. We're meter. not connected to anything right now. We use the water off the back of the building for construction. Okay. But I'm just saying that if you wanted to separate the two properties as far as charging each one separately for water, you could have your own meter. You could that's correct. The water company's thing. Don't come in and ask for a water meter until right. you put a, a, a separation on right. on hot lines. Otherwise, you're going down the wrong end. And Nina, sorry, can you point me to where the current lot coverage requirements are in the packet again? The minimum lot uh, parcel coverage. Yeah, yeah, it's behind the article. It's in with Article Five specific planning. It should be at the very back of that. So at the lat behind where uh, the zoning code is for commercial, that last page of the zoning code then starts that ordinance for the uh, lot coverage. I think so, yeah. Because um, page 19 on what I have is the building layout. Huh. That was the the updated one that went out yesterday. The updated one doesn't have it. The oh, it doesn't? One, no, I am so out. sorry. I thought it was attached. So the first one that I sent, I apologize. So when was it, the first one was sent out on I just want to pull it up here real quick. Um it would have been sent out like last week mm -hmm. but it would be page 19 of the building zoning code uh under an article 5 by 5.2 five r yeah no he's talking about the lot coverage ordinance oh okay. uh, zero yeah zero twenty three ten. Yeah. My apologies, Joe. I thought I had put it, I thought I put all that in there. I'm just looking to see what the lock coverage requirement is for a C2. It's 45%. Yes, 45% for C2. For C2, because you know, it just as a, a, a maybe a statement for the for the applicant that you know if if this doesn't get approved um based off of some of the the comments and the circumstances that there is a potential option based off of the lot coverage that you have on these properties to instead of doing a residential zone have it rezoned 
to a C2 because under the zoning code, I don't believe a C2 has a minimum lot area square footage. It just has a minimum width and depth requirement of 30 feet by 70 feet. So if you can meet the requirements for a C2 with the width and depth requirements and the lot coverage, you might be able to come back with a, an application for a, a lot split to split it into two C2 parcels. And a C2 parcel allows for any permitted use under C1 and C1 allows any residential office retail. So it would still allow for a residential, but it, it might be able to be a way to resolve the the size square footage issue and the uh, you know the the issue and concern with the the variance requirements, because at that point a C two, as long as you meet the width and depth requirements and the minimum coverage requirements, you you wouldn't require a variance and it wouldn't have to go to the board of adjustments. Okay. I don't think they can get seventy feet, though. Can you? Well, like I said, that's just, you know, that's something to to think about or, or consider. I don't know what the what the dimensions are, the proposed lots and stuff. I'm just pointing out that a, a, a C2 under the zoning code doesn't have a minimum area square footage requirement. It just has a minimum width and depth requirement. And with the new uh, coverage requirement, it has a 45% coverage requirement. So all of those would still have to be met for AC2, but that's just, I'm just throwing that out as it's one possibility with regard to this lot size, you know, trying to get it to where it's a, a 32 or 37 square foot lots. Actually, it's 140 feet deep, the lot, so you could split it and have 70 and 70, so you could do that if you and it's 50 feet wide, so it wouldn't meet those requirements. You'd have to move where he wants to put the proposed line, but. I have a question. Yeah. Um, uh, you were saying that at a minimum lot coverage of 45%, is that what you're saying? Maximum. Max, it is maximum, that's what I was wondering about. So that means that the building cannot take up more than 45%. Right of the yes, that's the maximum lot coverage. It's 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 what was established recently by the new regulation to help with trying to make sure that that houses and structures aren't so close and tight to each other because of fire issues and safety concerns. Where if one house goes up and it's only five feet away from the next house, the likelihood of that next house going up. So the way you try to control that is is in addition to having minimum setback requirements in certain zones, then you have your, your maximum lot coverage. So if you have a 10,000 square foot lot, the maximum size you could have in a C2 would be 4,500 square feet of structure, single story structure. You could have a, a 4,500 square foot two story structure as long as that that maximum lot coverage didn't exceed that 45%. Basically roof line or carport, anything that's not permeable. In other words, the rain can't hit the ground. So it's a footprint of the building. Yeah, and it's how it's a recharge. It's for recharge, water recharge, runoffs, and setbacks. But wouldn't there still have to be a variance for the size of the residential lot at that point? No. no, because you would be doing two commercial C2 lots. A oh. residential a residential structure under our zoning code is allowed on a C1, and a right. C2 includes everything that's on a C1. But you couldn't do a C1 because a C1 has a minimum square footage requirement of 6,000 square feet like the residential does. But when you look at the, the zoning table for a C2, it you know it says minimum lot square footage not applicable. It just has the the wet the dip ugh, the width and the depth requirements for a C two. 
So, I just want more question here is that so with the existing commercial building, um, uh, would that be maximum 45% and no more? I'm wondering. Now remember, the commercial building is there, it's grandfathered in. So okay. we just barely passed this rule about okay. how much you can cover a lot. So what would be the other C2 if they got split where the residents oh, it, it would it would apply to both because you're you're taking one lot and you're splitting it into two. Oh. So both lots would have to comply with the lot coverage requirements. There wouldn't be a, a grandfathered option there because you already have it already meets the current requirements. So yeah. that's but that's just that's that's just a suggestion, something that can be looked into. Um, you know, I you could even go as far as C3 because under our code C3, well, C3 just has larger minimum depth and width requirements of 75 and 100. So you probably wouldn't be able to. But C2 doesn't have a minimum lot square footage requirement. And if you could make it work based off of the layout, if you met the 30 foot width requirement, 70 foot depth requirement, and the 45 maximum 45 percentage lot coverage requirement, then there's a possibility that the property could be split and zoned C2 for both parcels. Any further comments from the board? <laughs> Are we ready to make the motion? I make a motion that we uh, Deny the request for variance um, for the non contributing property number 634 uh, at um, 320 Arizona Street. Yes. I'll second. So we have a motion and a second. I will call for a vote on the Tyler Bradbury. Aye. Aye. Cato Daly. Aye. Elizabeth Hartman. Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, motion is passed. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Should do it there. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, everybody. And if additional questions come up, feel free to. Talk to me. Sorry, I apologize.